Obviously, first task today. Our camp visibility is way up. I don't see why. All right, so we got to make a bed over here. Oh, that's a lot of use on that. <sighs> Nobody gets along with each other. Is the best one, I guess. I mean, if they want to live, we've got to we got to do things to take care of them. So, caretakers post. The caretakers post makes it possible to treat yourself or your companion who needs help. Care regenerates health and has a chance to improve bad status. Um, can we do this one? Oh, we don't have enough materials. All right. Um, who, who had the injury? Okay, so we need to put him. Uh, first, we'll give him some water. He's also very hungry. So hopefully that will help him. I don't know if that worked or not. I guess not. I guess we have to do the the in the repair thing on him. All right, we're gonna have to go out and look for some more stuff. We're because we're we're not able to do this. Yeah, and he's getting super infected. All right. I gotta, I gotta send her even though nobody gets along with her. Can they search someplace they've already been before? Answer is yes. So it doesn't look like we can go through here anymore. More vodka. Oh, we got some string. We definitely needed that. Oh, we got some more clay. Definitely needed that. Um, that was a lot of stuff. We should be in good shape. Okay, let's see if we can get this going now. Uh, medical tools. Unlocks the action wound dressing. Unlocks the action care. Okay, so, oh, it's this one we needed to do. Okay. I don't care if y'all get along with each other or not. We gotta get this up and going. Oh, 
Oh, and he's a medic. The character knows about the treatment and chance to recover AP from the care action. All right, actions. Wound dressing. So this guy, right? All right, so I hope that means that's what we had to do for... Yes, it's gone. Good. Okay. Um, we give her a root. Look, I don't care if y'all like it or not. You're going to have to eat it. Um, I thought somebody was tired. All right, I guess we were going to try to do... Oh, we only got one person. I don't think he's going to have the action points to do it. Well... I guess we have him filter water. Keep that fire going. Just so we can always have water at the ready. I wish we could make tea. It doesn't look like it. All right, I guess that's where we're at. I don't feel like we accomplished very much that day. We kept what's-his-name from getting staph infection or whatever. All right, let's hear about Grigory. Let me introduce myself. Grigory Dmitrievich. I presume that none of you has pickled the cucumbers. Are you seriously asking? Are you asking seriously? Do you realize what situation we are in? He's a drunkard. <laughs> this character likes the hard stuff. When sober, they can lose morale at night. When drunk, their morale increases. Of course I'm aware of that. We're damn far from the distillery. But that's... But what is this jabbing me in my side? Come on, baby. Come to your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't believe I said that and then it registered what it was. Oh, oh, it was a bottle. Never mind. Uh, good spirit. What a cold night. We should make a round of moonshine to warm up. Do we have any alcohol? We should rather keep it for a rainy day. <laughs> if the thugs get to us today, there is no point saving for tomorrow. <laughs> when drink is in, wit is out. If we get too intoxicated, the watches will go to hell. <laughs> we won't get out of this trouble in one piece if we go crazy. We must stay positive and distance from reality. Let fate decide then. Right pocket or left pocket. Each dialogue should be conducted sensibly. The decisions affect the relationship between the characters and the morale, both individual and entire camp. Selecting issues that match the character's nature will increase their morale, but they may not necessarily win the approval of the rest of the team. Select one of the answers. Well, I mean, it's a he's a, a scholar, so it doesn't matter left or right. What do you think, chat? Left or right pocket? First person who types something in, we will pick that one. Pants. Wow. Wow. Okay, right. 
Right, show me, Gregory. What have you hidden there? Oh my god. He's very upset. What a shot! Two bottles are clinking against each other because of the cold. Can't morale one up, but we got two more bottles of vodka. Actually, one sip won't hurt. Oh. 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 What is this infernal liquid? Not my drink, because I found it in the luggage compartment. Maybe it is not exquisite brandy from the St. Petersburg Salon, but for this land, it's a real delicacy. What if I should have put one of them in bed anyway? Man, all this stuff is so much. It's just, they should have bars next to them that, like, let you keep up with it. But it's just, it's a little too much. Now, why did he lose one? I don't understand. Because we took care of all that stuff before the day. The palisade is under snow. Oh, how starved we are. I feel bad. Let's look. Okay, we need to get this work thing going. We don't have enough string now. Only three more days and the camera crew will try to come find us. All right, let's take care of the thirst. Okay, he needs a drink. He needs a drink. He needs a drink. He is starving. There's so many poisonous mushrooms. Um, we gotta unsnow everybody. Marked pass. Thanks to knowing the area, fast trips beyond the camp, providing a small number of basic resources. Snare. Oh, we can add snares. Oh, we don't have enough sticks. Though. I don't mind putting this up here. I, I would like to do the snare thing so we could have some food. We definitely need to get some more sticks. So we'll have to send some people out. All right, he is... Let's just have him rest. He's done for the day. Um, he's tired too, but... I guess we'll send these two out. Ooh. There's some deer, but we don't really have anything. We need to find some sticks. Seven of them. That's nice. Uh, sticks, plenty, bark. Uh, we don't know what's here. Ooh. Be careful by getting lost. Oh, we found water. We got mold. Clay. Bones. Garlic. I'd like to get some more sticks. 
Oh, I already did that area. There we go. All right. Um, can we do this? Oh, you can gather wood on its own. Okay. I know y'all don't get along with each other, but... So, is this an automatic thing? Oh, we gotta check the snares. Surely we've not already caught something, right? Oh, it did say plus one. So we've actually got food that we can cook. Now, we will have to upgrade this to be able to cook, but we've got the clay and we've got enough stuff to do that first thing tomorrow. Can I put him here just to rest? I don't know, it takes AP. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. They're very picky about what they like to eat and everything. Uh-oh. Events are special moments in the game that can appear randomly. They can be the result of dialogues, character stories, critical characters, morale, findings on the map, or confrontation with renegades or wild animals. Events can relate to one or more characters. This is the portrait of the main character to whom the current event is description and applies to person making a decision. Additional characters taking part in the event are presented as portraits arranged in the line below the event title. During the event or as a consequence of choices made, relations, statuses, life points, and morale of the characters may change. During an event, you will have to make many, often difficult, choices. Some of them may require appropriate traits or having specific items in the characters or the camp's equipment to be able to choose through. Grigory is fidgeting on the seat, clearly excited. What, comrade? Would you like a drink? You start. The man takes off his cap and pulls out a mysterious bundle from it. I would drink, wouldn't I? But a reasonable fellow knows three rules when do limit the vodka. On St. Bartholomew, during a blizzard, and Grigory throws the bundle into the fire. And when he has something better than vodka, ha! Acrid smoke hits your nostrils, irritated by frost, and is immediately followed by bliss. What be what behavior is this? What are you poisoning us with, comrade Dmitrievich? Is it some rape or a hashish? Is that important? Grisha laughs as his voice slowly turns into the clatter of a stork. Unexpectedly, it turns out that you are sitting on a saucer around a big cup filled with coffee instead of the cold taga. A huge hand with a beautiful signet ring chases you away like flies. It is Tsar Nicholas himself who is reaching for a hot drink. Grigory Dmitrievich, you will be awarded the St. George's second class order at 10 years of Siberia for this stunt. The Tsar thunders and Grisha just clatters in response. Did he just drug us all up? He literally just, like, threw weed into the fire. And, um... Okay. Well, it didn't really do anything. We're just high. Is that what all of our bla eyes are black? Let's check the Northern River. Spoils of War. Why should we stick in this forest and cold? When we're still driving, a bend of a river could be seen in the north. We have get to, we have to get to it. I think it's Selinga or some influent of it. Anyway, all the rivers in this area flow into Pakal. That's what I'm talking about. We will build a raft and the next thing we see is Rekustox. Let's discuss this idea. 
Well, at least let's look for the river and check the ice condition. After all, it's autumn. Maybe the river will be navigable. And if it's covered with hard ice, we can build a sleigh like Chukchi people. Traveling down the river can be feasible, even without a team. This is not so stupid. Check the river float northwest of the camp. Hmm. Something to cheer up. Maybe you will take a warm up with us, my lady. I have some vodka at the bottom. No, thank you. I avoid strong alcohol, but feel free, Grigory Dmitrievich. Mrs. Butyevinda, I insist you take a sip. We can leave taking care of customs and conventions for the moment when we return to Petrograd. It's nice to hear that you believe we'll be back. Well, if we are to die here, then I see no reason for abstinence. Can you only talk about alcohol? If you want to cheer us up, maybe you'll sing something. There you go, dear lady. On the wild steps of Trotsibiklakia, where cold can kill you really quick, a vagrant is traveling alone, and from his pants peeks his huge... Bottle of vodka? <laughs> Mr. Dmitrievich, the song had different words. <laughs> What is this game? <laughs> he flounders through the thick taga. His foot is strapped in single sock. Maybe I will drink after all. <laughs> At least that helped our morale. Oh my lord. Alright, we need to get a cooking pot going. Get some food. And what? Oh, he's super hungry. Tired. We'll put him to bed. Actually, we'll get him to help build this. And we'll have him help. Okay, maybe not. All right, we can do stew, soup, herbal tea. Um, cooked food. We have no meat. I thought we got something from the, uh, whatchamacallit. Hmm. Like, I thought we got something from the, uh, snares. So she, she did get something. We have to roast the animal. Why does it take two people to cook something? Like that, I don't understand. A good cook does not waste ingredients. Oh, she's going to be super tired now, isn't she?
Oh man, they're all tired. I know he's the most tired. No bug soup. I guess not. Need to make some more water. Burnt meat. Okay, we'll give him some good food. The berries went quick. Um, we gotta go out on the expedition. So these two are gonna have to go. We already know where they've got to go, but we can search stuff on the way up there. I don't like the loss probability is so high. Uh oh. You reach the river that you have seen from the train windows before the crash. The riverbed is wider than you had expected. It could be Salinga, or some important influent of it. Although water is still flowing in the middle, most of the surface is covered with sugar. I'm gonna guess it's kind of a brush. and fallen snow slush, which forms solid ice at the banks. All ideas about escaping that seemed good by the fire now seem dubious. Check the possibility of floating a raft. You have walked along the bank in both directions far enough to look beyond the bends to see the flow of the river. It doesn't look good. On straight sections, the current is still visible, but on the bends, there are piles of ice flows. Sailing on a raft would involve the need to constantly chop down the way and watch out for the shallows as to not end up on the icy water. It's even more dangerous than traveling on foot along the tracks. However, there is one positive side of your trip. Getting to know the shoreline will definitely help you orientate yourself during later expeditions. That's it for today. Wind and frost are much more noticeable by the river. You think it's wise to come back amongst the trees before you catch a cold. Hey, Libras, how are you doing? Anybody else that snuck in here? Thank you all for showing up. Appreciate y'all. Oh, we found some eggs. Uh oh, there's those guys. I think we needed three of them. All right, um, get rid of that. Let's get this. And then return to camp. So it looks like you can go out for an expedition as long as you want to roll the die. So that's interesting. Um, oh, he's hallucinating. It makes me mad that, like, they can't do anything really on their own. But let me see here. Um, can he check the snare on his own? 
Try again tomorrow. Guess not. Gather bushwood. All right. That was a rough day. Nothing good really happened that day. No improvements. Uh, hypochondriac. After so many days, scurvy symptoms should be noticeable. Sleepiness and muscle aches are all prelude. And now... Oh, stop it with all this moaning, Alexi. You're such a hypochondriac. Symptoms of frost are more palpable. And before you feel the effects of scorbutus, you'll be long gone from starvation. Wow. Well, yes, yes, that would be correct. Do you agree with me? No, no, I can see your nervousness and fatalism. This is exactly what happens with scurvy, just before effusions appear. <laughs> Are you a doctor, damn it? Cholera doesn't threaten us here. No, it threatens you everywhere. Take it from me, of all people that is certain about cholera. No, but I studied medicine for two years. No, but I've studied medicine for two years. Do you know Latin? It so happens that I know. As my uncle used to say, Medici cura ti ipsum. Oh, oh. Medici, actually. Let me, let me, let me, let me, I gotta look this up. Medici. Could be cura te ipsum. Physician heal thyself, sometimes quoted in the Latin form. Oh, it goes back to Jesus. Luke 4.23. You will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician heal thyself. Ooh, she not just threw some medical talk at him, she bammed him upside the head with the Bible. This is a joke, and one in very bad taste. This is no joke. With this knowledge, instead of feeling sorry for yourself, you should be helping us. Oh. Listen, I have an idea. The tracks on this section have been built recently, and every few dozen verse there should be a hut of workers who were cutting down the railroad ties. Perfect idea! So we just have to explore the area a dozens of verse, right? Wow. Explore it yourself if you want to. If you raised a finger to do a decent job, you might know that it's worth checking the tracks. Why do, why do I... I got like all the people that hate each other. There are no logger huts by the tracks. But there are markings for the com commissioners. The mile marking on one of these ties should tell us where to look for the workshop. Now you're talking. So let's check the tracks immediately. Such a forest hut will not only be a better shelter, but probably some equipment that has been left in it. Why are you talking about it just now? I talk all the time, but nobody is listening to me. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Welcome to my world. I, I understand that wholeheartedly. You talk so much, but nobody listens. Comrade SKS understands. That is right. If Pete was here, he would bring up that uh, one picture. All right, we're going to have to get some water. We need to cook a little bit. Have her check the snares. She did find something. She's also tired now. So I don't understand, like... 
so does she, she still has the point. So does that mean that we can make her come over here and cook? Oh, it says she's resting. I don't like the trade-off of three or one to one. That just... We're eating a weasel, or we're cooking it. Uh, we got two. Okay, these two guys are very hungry. Keeping everybody at thirst, but um, why has no one been eaten yet? I don't. I don't know. We're we're already running into the issue. A grill. I don't care if y'all hate each other. We need a grill. I will also upgrade this water. That's a big deal. We still need this workshop going. But if we do, oh no, no, if we do that, we won't be able to go out and look for stuff. But I feel like it, oh, we don't have enough rocks. But I feel like we kind of have to. We've got to get this up and going. It's something we've waited way too long to work on. Knife, fabric, altar. Oh, we can make rope. What does a torch do? Lost probably. Okay, that's good. A shovel. I think a knife is the first thing we make. Oh, we don't have the string. That sucks. <laughs> so we didn't get to go out and look for the stuff today. That was bad. Is there ever a way to make this bigger to hold two people? Oh, I can't even look since she's resting. Oh, this ought to be a rough night. I think we're about to get to the point where we're going to start losing people. Sergei Ivanov, do you know the story of the Potinkman battleship? But you know that I'm not a sailor. Why are you asking about it, Alexei Robanovich? You know that I'm not a sailor, and then when the crew of Potemkin rebelled, I was a little boy. All I know is that it is now fighting near Turkey and has probably even got its old name back. 
I don't want to condemn anyone, and I understand soldiers who refuse to serve under unworthy officers. Tell me, Sergei Avanadov, what do soldiers on the front think about such rebellions? Soldiers on the front usually think about how to survive. Time for political reflection is a luxury we can readily afford. But you certainly have, dear Sergi, some opinion on these events. My uncle claims that this whole rebellion broke out not against admiralty, but the cooks, because the rascals cooked borscht on old meat and our sailors ran to the privy, as if somebody set their pants on fire. Anyway, probably the crew of a small destroyer or gunboat would not argue, but those from Potemkin were supposed to be the elite of the Russian fleet. The rebellion on board was very politically aware, from a nasty dinner straight to the pages of history. He would say this. I don't think, Sergi, that you have accurate information. I know firsthand that the rebellion on board was very politically aware. Ancient history. Now let's worry so that after our meals you don't have to run to the preview right away. I have an iron stomach, but I'm not sure about you. Oh, well, they're not going to like each other. Oh, I'm, okay. Unfortunately, the locomotive will not start, but the hand car was attached to the last car. We could use it to get out of here. Oh, that's a good idea. And we will go away towards the setting sun? Come on, if the hand car is derailed, we will not be able to put it on the track amongst the whistle of bullets of the thugs. What if it isn't derailed? Anyway, the hand car is not everything. Saddle horses were in the last car too. So now they are chopped meat. Even if some of the horses survived the catastrophe, they were probably taken by these bandits. So instead of checking it, you'd rather sit here idle. The renegades will be here any minute. What's the plan then? You'll need to look into the last car and check the condition of the horses and the hand car as much and as little. In that case, it's best that you go alone. A large group will attract the attention of the- Wow. Great. So we gotta send him out by himself. Hey Johnny Balls, what's going on? <sighs> Alright, so we'll send him out. He's very hungry though. A lot of people are very hungry. Let's send him down there, though, by himself. If something happens, something happens. As far as the mind allows, someone else would think among the white trees there is only peace and quiet. The rhythmic creaking of snow underfoot could put someone else in a cheerful, maybe even joyful mood. Someone else would enjoy moments spent away from the pressure and resentment of the camp, but not you. You know that there are renegades who derailed the train and killed the survivors. If they find your camp, nothing will stop them from making another slaughter, and your footprints are perfectly visible in the fresh snow. These thoughts don't give you peace. Why move away from the camp if the butchers can easily find you? Isn't it better to hang around and go back to the camp? You will tell the others that you heard conversations and had to run away, or that there was a bear around. Get a grip and continue the expedition. He's a soldier. No, you cannot fail the rest. You haven't survived so many days to let yourself be overcome by fear. Oh, there's nothing. At the campfire, this idea seemed better. Now when one of the bandits can jump out from behind any tree, the plan of seeing the freight car is no longer so attractive. On the other hand, passive waiting for help in the middle of the forest is probably just as scary. So you crawl slowly between the snowdrifts, strain your ears to hear any activity from the side of the wreck and all the thickets able to hide in a man. While blurring the footprints that you are leaving behind in the snow, it seems to last forever. Crawling reminds you of war trenches. There, it was impossible to protrude the nose over the blindage. 
so as not to get hit by any Prussian bullet. Here, it's basically the same. In the end, however, you crawl under the chassis of the rear car and calm down a bit. Despite the frost, from the inside you can smell the hideous stench of carcass and hardly anyone would like to prepare an ambush in such conditions. After a while, you reach the broken side gate and carefully look through it. The view inside is quite unpleasant. Some of the horses died during the catastrophe. Some were left to die by the bandits and died from wounds and frost. Saddle horses that survived the train derailment without visible damage were probably taken to the mountains. And the luggage boxes? Well, there are a lot of broken crate boards, straw, and saddle, cloth soaked with the stench of death. In the future, it will probably be worth returning here for materials for the construction of the shelter, but for now, you are alone. You only take a bit of frozen, rotting horse meat to try. Check the hand car behind the car. It's better to get out of here. You're afraid that every minute spent in the car is a risk of attracting the attention of renegades, but you also have enough of the smell of rot. You blur the traces of your presence and crawl back. Why did I told him to do the other thing? We'll take this raw meat and this. You get near the tracks. In fact, on some railway decks, there are signs that you have talked about earlier. You find information about the type of wood and date of felling, as well as names of the inspectors. Sometimes, sometimes even vulgar signs of the employees. Recent dates indicate felling west of the place where you are. However, felling doesn't have to mean the place where the woodcutters slept. They certainly cleared wood from the whole area, and they could have their shelter even a few verses away. Uh, look for information of the workshop only. Look for information on the... Let's look for the workshop. There it is. There are burn directions and distant markings on one of the decks. You must look for a workshop about a half a day's march northeast of your current camp. Great. If the hut is away from the tracks, then maybe it has escaped the attention of the renegades. Anyway, you think the thugs are sticking to the area south of the wreck. Wow. Expedition is lost? What? Well, there's one man down. I'm not fond of you. The fire is always too low. Yeah, it was weird because I didn't even really plan on doing that. But it is what it is. It's a survival game. You're supposed to lose people. Oh, I bet I can't make him sleep. Oh, maybe I can. There we go. All right. Uh, we need to feed them. They ate rotten food and they were okay with it. And I'm okay with it. Wow, we actually ended the day pretty well. Um, let's see if he can actually make a knife now. No, we don't have the string. Well, she has the cooking skill and we're still burning the food. Which is kind of ridiculous. Oh. 
after we made a knife. Let's make a hammer. Alright, that was good. That was good. Um... How much water do we get now per... Plus six. Okay, we'll do it again. And that will be good for water for a while. I can't believe we lost What's-His-Face. Oh no. It's weird. Sergei doesn't come back. Do you think he would risk an overnight stay outside the camp? If he came across wolves or bandits, he didn't get a say. Ugh. I sound like him. No more pessimism and panic. So you admit that he may have been right in his sad prophecies. Even so, I am glad that he has not poisoned us with his fears now. Of the two evils, it is better to sleep before death than to shiver all night in fear. Poor boy. It is a pity if he did die. Maybe he just ran away. He left us to our fate. Just as he abandoned his comrades before. These are groundless accusations. Okay, I am sorry. Then the wolves ate him. <laughs> oh, gosh. Das Klonglich. Bah. Undercutting the branch. Sounds good. Do you know what is wrong with the Bolsheviks? Is something wrong with them? Would you like to see the return of Tsarism as well? I will tell you then. The private Germans are fighting with their also socialists for the most part. And they, good lord. And they, and they come from the front as a result of widespread mobilization, not bloodlust. And yet each of them, without exception, has a portrait of the emperor with him. Whether on a cigarette case, on a piece of paper, or medallion. They put the interest of their nation higher than parties, idealists, and even private desires. Even as socialists, they consider themselves primarily Germans, hence the honor to Emperor Wilhelm and respect for his merits. Russian socialists want to reject nationalities and radicalize. God, that sounds like modern-day America. They are ready to sacrifice their own state, that is, cut the branch they are sitting on in the name of utopian idea. Too real. Too real. <sighs> Do you sympathize with a German? After all, a branch can be cut if one comes off of it. Oh, he's he would say that. If Germans, whom you show amazingly great sympathy, can throw socialist slogans while the Russians are acting instead of talking. After all, a branch can be cut if one comes off of it. Oh my god! What will Germans do to their socialism if it still bow to the emperor and their masters? Small changes are no changes. They can worship Wilhelm, they can even overthrow him. But with this attitude, they will quickly install another despot in his place. She is so out of place in these people. The comrade Eskies is questioning the revolution. I always said if there was ever anything big that happened, as somebody who taught history, I'd be one of the first they sent to the firing lines. Oh, he's starving. If you aren't supporting SKS on Patreon yet, what are you even doing with your 2021? If these July Patreon supporters were a school bus, I'd have to sign a permission slip before writing them. Nicholas Absher, Azure Rain, The Least Expected, Critias, Zachary McKinley, James Matisse, and Party Commissar.